Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good? Big moves happening, hey? Big moves happening on Iridola, USDJPY as well, um, and a couple others like USDCHF. We just had uh, Swiss National Bank cutting 25 basis points. That it wasn't expected to be. So that's, wow, that's a really, really different way to start to actually finish March, you know. I want to be covering um, some topics today. And one of them, of course, is the PMIs that we just had from Europe. Uh, but most importantly, the Fed. All right, so we're going to spend quite a bit of time um, going around and involving some aspects through the Fed because it's what is, uh, you know, now, of course, SNB as well, but it's, of course, what is driving the market in a sense. Um, the, the Another pause from the Fed, um, but as well, the statement. Okay. Okay. I've just sent, so that's done, and we are good to go. All right, so if you guys want to, you know, follow me on the steps, you can. Um, very easy, very um, good to go. First thing we're going to do today, guys, is FOMC um, statement. Okay. And we're going to open it just on Google. Um, and we're going to click on the first link. Okay, let me, oh, there we go. People are joining us. Okay, cool. Okay, FOMC statements. And we're going to go Federal Reserve uh, meeting calendars and information. Welcome, welcome, everyone. And that we have it March. Uh, 1920, it just depends where you are, because if we are in Australia, that was released today on the 21st. I've explained this already, how it works. Um, oh, there we go. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, we get some, we got some people on board now. So we're going to go for the statement, and then we're going to go for a look on the projected materials as well. So statement, we can just click HTML. And projections materials, we can just click HTML as well. So I'm going to read it through this um, small text here. Um, it's very small, as you guys can see, not much. But we're going to break down part by part. Um, okay. And then after that, we're going to go for the, um, for the projections material. Okay. There is a little bit more here, but we're just going to go for the important stuff. And we're going to look to see if we can have a stronger dollar or if we can have a weaker dollar this year of 2024. Okay. If you have watched my podcast with Nathan Bray, we are expecting a weaker dollar for this year. Okay. Um, but okay, let's go. Uh, first of all, uh, recent indicators. Let me get my pen. Now I want this one here on green. Yeah, good. All right, let's go. So recent indicators suggest that economic activity has been expanding at a solid pace. Well, that's more than true, okay? Because if we look to the GDP, uh, we have we've had um, a stronger GDP from the from the from the US, right? And that's exactly what are they referring here? They had a stronger uh, growth. Uh, and economic activity as well. Mostly, you know, uh, most of the activity on the economy has been stronger. Job gains have remained strong. Definitely it has. And the unemployment rate has remained low. In a sense, um, yes, but the unemployment did came higher than expected at the last time, and it wasn't very good, okay? Uh, inflation has eased over the past year, but remains elevated. Over the past year, but not over the past months. Okay, so this is something we're going to touch base later. But, you know, pretty standard, this beginning of the Fed uh, monetary policy. 
the committee seeks to achieve maximum employment and inflation at the rate of 2% over the longer run. The committee judges that risks to achieving this, its employment and inflation goals are, um, are moving into better balance. The economic outlook is uncertain um, and the committee remains highly attentive to inflation risks. Why they say that? Because if you haven't watched, um, you know, we're not going to go through it because it's, it's, it's just too long. But if you have watched the FMC press conference, that's when a German poll comes in and do a live, um, answering some questions, you know, going through all of um, the statement as well he just made and so on. Um, he's he've mentioned that we will have some sticky inflation during this year. So this is exactly why they are looking to the inflation, right? Because if we look here, uh, they say the economic outlook is uncertain. Well, it is. We don't know where the GDP is going, if it's going to grow, if it's not going to grow. But in 2023 last year, um, in June, June 2023 last year, uh, we had a statement saying, well, the minutes were saying that the economic projection from the members of the board, from the board members, basically the whole FOMC members that participate into the meetings, say that they're not expecting a too much growth from the economy in 2024 um, and they are expecting sticky inflation right and this is why they are hem, remain highly attentive to inflation risks because when they say that it's uh it, they just mean that there is a reason there is a possibility of a higher inflation okay and so um this is why they have to maintain it very attentive um, very highly attentive to, to that. In support of it goes, uh, the committee decided to maintain the target range of the federal for the federal fund rates at five and a half to five um, five and a quarter uh, percent. All right. In considering, well, that means that they did um, they did a pause. All right. We we all know here for federal funds rate right, at uh, maintain. The target range to a federal funds rate at five and a quarter, five and a half percent. In considering any adjustments to the target range for the federal funds rate, the committee will carefully assess incoming data. So basically, you know, when when we have something like this, it's, it's pretty easy to understand. Uh, going to is incoming data. That uh, let me go to the other side. Let's go for this side. that they are looking for data dependent, that they are basically data dependent. Okay. So incoming data means data dependent. Now, moving ahead, uh, we go for the involving outlook and the balance of risks. The committee does not expect it will be appropriate to reduce the target range until it has gained a greater confidence that the inflation is moving sustainably towards 2%. I've mentioned it like multiple and multiple times, okay? Uh, they have been saying this um, to reduce. Okay, they have saying, they have, they have, they have been seeing it saying in these at multiple and multiple times. Why? Because uh, we've seen inflation in US going ups and down. So we had ups, we had downs. But the problem is they want something more. Uh, let me draw it here. It's either they want something more like, you know, like a steady going down inflation. And what we having right now is something like, you know, these little bumps here on inflation and they don't want those top points here they want a very small corrections after months and months and months so they want to uh doesn't that a, this uh doesn't that a decency mean that the same as they are uncertain um uncertain in a sense of a different perspective it may be but data dependent means that they are analyzing incoming data to take all the decisions into the uh to the uh to the right decision so uh what they mean by this is if they say that um data dependent is 
we're going to outlook, we're going to see the outlook for CPI. We're going to see the outlook for retail sales. We're going to see the PMIs. We're going to see um, whatever importations and exportations and so on. When we see a uncertain is that they don't know what these data will come because they may have a projections that where we're going to be looking right now after, you know, after we finish this they may have a projection, but that projection may be a bit uncertain, uncertain. But sometimes they have projections that they are quite certain of that. All right, as we did in 2020 and 18 and and 2020 and so on. Okay. Now continue here. Let me take this drawing off. Let me grab this call. Um, in addition, the committee will continue reducing its holding of treasury securities and agents debt, um, added some debt MMBS, so mortgage-backed securities. Um, that's what made the 2008 crash, all right, guys? Um, as described in its previous announcement plans, uh, the committee is strongly committed to retain returning inflation to its 2% objective. Of course, they are. They always have to say that. In assessing the appropriate instance of monetary policy, the committee will continue to monitor the implications of incoming information for the outlook, for the economic outlook. The committee would be prepared to adjust the instance of monetary policy as appropriate if risks emerge that could impede the attainment of the committee goals. So let's just go through this again here. The committee would be prepared Oopsie, oopsie, I need a bigger one. The committee would be prepared to adjust the stance of monetary policy as appropriate if risks emerge that could impede the attendance of the committee's goals. So that's the answer to your questions, Casey. They do have the goals already and they do have some data on their head, but they're not sure if that's exactly what's gonna happen. But if it's not, that's not a problem as well because they have to be prepared at the central bank, right? And therefore, they say the committee would be prepared to adjust the instance of MP as appropriate if risks that could impede the attainment of the committee goes, okay? So just, you know, they always are ready to, if something happens, of course. The committee assessment will take into account and there, there goes and then they comes and say, okay, look market, this is what we are waiting the data for so we can take upper decisions, all right? Let me take this blurred from my background. It's much better. Um, the committee assessment will take into account a wide range of information. So they're saying, look, this is what we're looking, okay? Um, these are the things we're gonna be looking, okay? So pay attention into the next releases and what the goes is, um, including readings on labor market conditions, inflation pressures and inflation expectations, not only the pressure, what are the market is expecting from the inflation as well, um, and financial and international developments. It doesn't matter what's only happening with US. They need to see what is happening outside from US as well because they can't take a decision based on what only happening for them. Because let's say something goes on on um, whatever, any part of the world, and the import and exports get dignified on the balance sheet of the government. Well, that is a problem for the Fed. The Fed needs to take into account the international development as well, not only the um, um, the the national development. If you if you know what I mean, um, so this is the you know they, it's very important to us to um, where is my black here? So labor market readings. Oopsie, that's too big. Labor market readings, um, inflation and pressures and inflation expectations, and financial and international developments. Okay. Um, what the? Oops, sorry. Let me put this on black. What? the FMC slash Fed, because do you guys know what's the FMC? The FMC is different from the Fed. The Fed does the, um, the Fed does 
the decision. The FOMC does the meeting for the decision. So the Fed is the federal um, bank, all right? So he is the central bank. Now the FOMC is the federal open market committee. So it's a committee of the members from the Fed that do the meeting and decide what they will do. Some of them have more um, weight than others in a sense of, let's say I'm a senior trader in a trading floor and you are only a mid trader and we have a junior trader. Of course, I would prefer to have, you know, I would hear both of them, the junior and the mid trader, but I would choose the mid trader because, you know, you are on your, you are better in a sense. Maybe you're not better, but, you know, you, you have a higher, um, a higher standard than the junior trader. And of course, I would take my decision based on my decisions because I'm the senior. So same goes for inside the FMC. Some of them have more weighted on the decisions than others. So, you know, the Bank of England have, the Bank of England have, you know, seven against two, five against one, uh, and then so once because it, it, it differs from what they are, they're looking. It, and again, it's always good to have both sides on the market in the same meeting because imagine if we only had one side, it wouldn't be good. You know, definitely wasn't wouldn't be good. Now, um, uh, what the FMC, the Fed is looking for, looking for to take, looking to take the next decisions into MP um, space R. I've explained already what's R. R stands for rates, okay? So, so this is exactly what the Fed FMC is looking to take the next decisions uh, into the monetary policy rate decision. So they're looking to labor market conditions, inflation pressures and inflation expectations and financial and international developments. Now, Let's have a look on those things. Um, let's have a look on those on those things that they're looking for. And of course, they they put their you know voting on the MPA monetary policy action were Jim H. Paul, uh, Chair John C. Williams, Vice Chair Thomas. See, there, there it goes. Okay, so Jim Paul, oopsie. So Jim Paul, of course, we all know it, the big boy. And then we have the chair that is John C. Williams. And then we have the vice chair that it's Thomas One Barkin. We have, uh, sorry, we have Thomas One Barkin. We have Michael S. Barr, Raphael Bostic, Michelle Gorman, Lizen Cork, Mary DeLay, Philip Jefferson, Adriana Kluger, Loret Master, and Christopher J. Waller. So sometimes you see those guys is picking alone into some of the statements that they do, um, some speeches that they do. And the market, of course, that's the thing. The market hears some more than others. Okay, well, let's say Mary C. Daly, all right? She goes, speaks, no one's care. But, well, if Jerome Paul is speaking, guys, let's have a look on that, Okay. Um, just a minute, guys. Okay, we're back. Um, so, so the market pay attention in some of the the members more than others, of course, because they take more decisions than others. They have a more weight than others, right? Uh, well, that's pretty much it. See, that's pretty much it from here. Let me take a screenshot of that so I can send after into the Telegram group. Okay, cool. Now, let's have a look on some of those aspects. Um, they're looking at labor market conditions. Okay, so what do we do? We come to FinLogics. What I like about FinLogics is it's so easy to use. You you can go to calendar. You can um you can. It's just so easy. It's so good. 
one of the best economic calendars that you can have on the industry at the moment. Um, so let's just load it. My connection is a little bit late, sorry. Okay, there we go. So we want to have a look on US only. See, this is this is something good about Finlogix. You can just select United States um, and you can select last month. Well, let's, let's say until beginning of this year. Okay. To now. There we go. So this is exactly what I want. I want only the US, okay? So I can take it off the median and I can leave only high um, high news impact. And let's have a look on the NFPs. So I'm gonna click on load more, load more, load more again. And then there we go. And then I'm gonna click Control F and then I'm gonna write NFP. Non Palmer payroll. Here we go. One, next one. Here, February, and now March. Let's have a look on that. This one is January. Okay. Forecast was 200,000. All right. We had an actual of 275,000. So that means 75,000 above. What that shows to me that it's very well going because we're having 75,000 above what expected, okay? Um, if we put into, yeah, there we go. See, this is the consensus. The green line is the consensus and the blue line is what the actual comes in. You can say that most of the times it comes higher than expected. Most of the times, as you can just see. And it was higher than expected as well from the from the previous. Now, looking to what's that? February, February uh, came higher than expected as well. Sorry, this is not what I want. It's not loading properly. Here, 170 on January for December and it came 216. Okay, so much higher than expected. Uh, now, next one from January, uh, 180 expected, it came 353,000. So much, much higher. And our last one, now uh, March, 200 expected, we came at 275,000. So what I'm saying here is that all of these NFPs have came much higher, at least 100,000 higher than expected. Okay, sorry, uh, at least 80, 70 to 80,000 higher than expected. So, the labor market, it is on good condition. Now, these people are getting employed month after month. But how long they are holding this job for? Are they holding for a day? Are they holding for a week? Are they holding for a year? Are they holding for 10 years? Are they holding for 50 years? Are they holding until they die? Because this is what actually matters. It doesn't matter if I give you a job today. You're going to be happy. It's going to be that. Do cool, nice. Tomorrow, fight it. You're off. Get off from my office. I don't want you anymore because I'm costing. I'm, 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 I'm getting off on the costs, right? Well, this is the important because US can tweak these numbers, but they can't tweak the unemployment numbers because it's a real thing. People can see, people can feel on the society. Let's have a look on those things. Unemployment rate. There we go. Higher than expected. Much higher than expected. Uh, sorry, lower than expected. 3.8% came in at 3.7%. Very good. People are keeping up the job. So that's good until January. That's fantastically. Now let's see March, February. Ooh, 3.9. Hmm, that's not good. It came much higher than expected. That means that they were expecting 3.7. So what they were expecting here, they were expecting people to only had a point uh, to maintain the same as they were in January. But when we look to February, uh, that didn't work. That didn't work, okay? And they were expecting less people employed than the last month. So what they're trying to do, they're reducing the uh, laboring. Less people working, higher the salary because the labor uh, market is 
um, supply and demand is not matching. Okay. Um, now, going to March. Sorry, February. Of March, February. And. Oh, I don't have it here. I don't have January. Mm, oh, of course I don't have January because January was released on February. Sorry, guys. So anyways, so we had a higher uh, an employment rate on um, February. So sorry, lower. And we had a higher on um, March. Okay. That means from February. So January and February, both together, meh, less, you know, more or less. All right. Now, let's have a look on another thing. What else they're looking for? They're looking for the inflation pressure and inflation expectations. Not a problem. Let's go and see CPI. We can just search for inflation as well. Inflation rate month over month, higher than expected on January. Um, February. Higher than expected as well. And March, higher than expected as well. Oh, what a surprise, right? What a surprise. What does that show to us? It is sticky. And what can happen with the next inflation coming high again? Because I've mentioned that inflation will be sticky this year. And therefore, um, these, it's, it's, it's very... It's very rare to, to listen to a central bank saying that, but I, I, I even posted it on my Telegram today. Um, so if you're not on my Telegram, I will leave the link on the on the on the chat here and you can you can join us. But I've I've said it like Jerome Paul, you know, made this statement and one of the I can't remember where the guy was from, maybe Rotors or S and um, Lisa, I can't remember. Anyways, he was like, look, uh, we we want to know if even with those high inflations and NFP getting highs, you will cut rate. And he was like, NFP, it's it's not a problem anymore. Even though NFP comes higher, we will be cutting rates if unemployment come lower. So stay stay very, very close looking to the, um, to the unemployment rate, guys, because... This is what will actually move the market forward. You know, I've, I've been mentioning it. And the PPI as well, because when the CPI came high and nothing happened, remember? I even have it here. I can show it to you. Euro dollar. Here, US CPI higher. All right, look, little bump, and then, you know, just continue to go up. And then the PPI came higher because then the market looked at, okay, they have an inflation. They are in a sticky inflation right there. That's a problem. And then, of course, it's good for the market because that means that the Fed will hold for longer. Well, today it wasn't what it was, you know, expected. So they they are not planning to hold for longer. Uh, they are planning to cut three times this year and the first in June. I'm go we're going to go through this soon. So let me put here the. Uh, link for, for the Telegram group if you're not there. There you go. Uh, now, higher, all of the three months was higher than expected. Month of a month, year of a year, quarter of a quarter. Okay. Uh, and now, last thing, financial and international developments. Well, this would be to take too long, but, you know, doing an overall analysis, uh, what are the U.S. Uh, trading off? Uh, now, let's have a look at the FOMC projections materials um, accessible version. So table one shows us the economic projections, um, reserve bank presence under the individual assumptions of projected appropriate monetary policy, March 2024. So for 2024, they are looking for a change in the GDP uh, on the real GDP to 2.1%. So that's not good because we are coming from a much higher 3. Point something percent from last year, 3.2% from last year. So we are declining on the growth. Okay, that's not good for US, either for the US dollar. Um, December projection is at 1.4. 
Now, unemployment rate, they are looking to a higher unemployment rate. Okay, what are the unemployment rate we just got? Uh, unemployment rate was 3.9%. Um, so if we look at, they are looking at 4%. So we may continue to have some higher unemployment rate um, for the end. And then they're looking for 4.1, 4, 4.1, and then normalizing on the longer run uh, between 3.9 to 4.1 in 2024. Now, PCE inflation produces consumer um, end 2.4% in 2024, 22 in 2025, and 2.0, and then long run, of course, 2.0 again. So in a sense, they are looking at inflation declining, but continue to be very sticky into the producer price um, ending. Core PC inflation, same, same stuff. We are looking to go uh, 0.6 base points lower than the, this year in 2026. Federal funds rate, this is very important. What are they looking for the rates, okay? So, they're looking at 4.6% um, in 2024. They're looking at 3.9% in 2025, 3.1% in 2026, and 2.6% in the longer run. But now, if we come to the dot plot, um, what can we see here is we are right now at 5.5%, 5 525, 5.5%, okay? It's a, it's a bend. So, let me get my pen here. So, 5.25 goes to 5 and then goes to 4.75 and then goes to 4.5. How many cuts are we having here? One, two, three cuts. Okay, so this is what the market is expecting. Okay, because if we put into, um, if into here in 2024, the majority of the market is expecting to end the year between 4.5 to 4.75 percent. The dot plot, okay. The majority is here. Okay, so this is this is what the market is expecting. The market is looking for something. Uh, where is this? There we go. Uh, the market is looking for something in 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 between those lines. And you know, and if we look. Ooh, 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 and if we look to to what the federal funds protections are saying, that's quite that's quite that's quite true, because the Fed is waiting to finish this year in four point six percent. So remember, the market is expecting to point five four point five percent. So look, we we will have cuts. We will have cuts, and the US dollar is getting loss of this is strength. So there are good opportunities now to, you know, good, um, in my take, in my opinion, looking at these, to long euro dollar, to long pound dollar, long USD JPY, um, sorry, short USD JPY, but I wouldn't, but, you know, just um, an opinion. So uh, very, very tricky situation right now. Okay, so let's have a look on now on when they will cut those, um, those rates. Now, Looking at May, 93.6% um, of the market is expecting to maintain the target rate range of 5.555. Um, so nothing changes in there, all right? Only 6.4% is expecting a cut of 25 base points that it's out of range. Um, now, looking at June, there we have it. 70% of the market is expecting a 25 base point cut. 26% of the market is expecting no change and 4.6% of the market is expecting a 50 base points cut. All right. 50, 25, and zero. 25, zero. All right. Now, I'm of course on the same side as what the 69.2% of the market is expecting. I'm expecting a cut on June. I was expecting a cut on March, but then after those high inflations, I've explained this to you guys already on YouTube videos. So this is an importance of you watching the YouTube videos um, and not missing any of those is when we got the higher printing of the CPI in January, I was like, nah, forget about it. They're not gonna cut in March. And I was right again. So it's not, it's not 
you know out of this world it's just coming here and doing exactly what i'm doing as an analyst this would be your daily routine okay now looking uh looking continuing so i'm just gonna put on the site here um june from 5.25 to five, okay. Now let's have a look on July. Remember, we're gonna be at five, all right? We're gonna be at five. We will, we will get off from 525 to 552 to 525, five, all right? And the market is expecting a pause then, all right? The market is expecting a pause on July. Is it too early to say? I would say it's too early to say because it depends what they say on June, 12th of June. Um, it's going to be a game changer in the market as well. Okay. So 0, 25, uh, 25. And then they're expecting 25 base points up, minus, and here 50. Okay. More or less, um, I'm, I will look to day pause again. Therefore, they can cut on September. They can pause on November, and then they can cut on December. Okay. So, June a cut, July a pause, September a, a cut, November pause, and um, December a cut. So, therefore, three cuts this year. All right, three cuts this year. So this is what the market it is expecting, and I'm following with them. So when we when we look to here, so nothing changes on July, and then September they're expecting a cut. Okay, expecting a cut, forty five percent expecting a cut, twenty five base point cut. So oopsie. So if we if we take here. Then September from 5.0, uh, they would go to 5 to 4.75. Would the cuts be good or bad for the dollar? It will be, it, it will be really bad for the dollar. It will be really bad for the dollar, not good. Even though if ECB doesn't cut, if ECB doesn't cut, US dollar cuts, your dollar to the moon. This is how economy works. And then November, remember, we are right now at 4.75. November, we will maintain the same target. And then December, they will cut. All right. Well, mo well a bit indecided here. 0.7% higher on no cuts and point, you know, here. So um, just my take again. Um, I will be looking to a cut on December from 475 to um, 4.5. Okay. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and let me take a screenshot of that. If it works. Oh, my computer just lagged. Oh, okay. There we go. Here. Okay. So this is what I'm looking for. And do you guys have any questions regarding this or is it all good? All good? No. No. Very good. Okay, cool. Now, uh, let me close this, let me close this, let me close this, let me close this, and let me close this, this. Okay, now, two minutes. Um, well, 50 minutes ago, we had, uh, <clears throat> sorry, 45 minutes ago and 50 minutes ago, we had ERA and uh, UK PMIs. And as we can see, a bit of a mixed outcome in there. Uh, where we have Eurozone manufacturing PMI is coming lower than expected, uh, 0.2 lower than expected. 
in a sense, how is gold going to be affected when these cuts will come? That's a very good question. Um, gold will be going up because when this when this all happens, all right. Think about that. Think about that. Let me let me draw this for you. Let me stop sharing my screen and share it again. Can you guys see this? Can you guys see this? Yep. Okay. Um, right. So think about that. All right. Think about that. You is go you going to travel? All right. You going to do a. You going you gonna go somewhere, whatever you want to go. Uh, you are here. What you are on this box, All right? So you are right here. There will be a time where you're going to look to your front and you're going to have more or less something like, you know, a road, something like that. So let me put in black. So you're going to go to the front and then you're going to stop here and you're going to look to the sides. You will have like one, you will have another one, you will have another one and then another one and then another one sorry I'm finishing soon and then this one this one and maybe this and so on so you have multiple ways to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're gonna have eight ways to go. Well, you're here. Just remember that you're here, right? You're driving the. Don't. You come to this interse intersection. Eight ways to go. Oh my God. Where I'm gonna go? I don't know. I don't know. There's so many places I can go, but I just want to go to one. And then you look to the side. Uh, you look to the side. And then you have a beautiful, uh, what color? Blue. You're going to have a beautiful blue to the side that goes forever, line straight. Okay, like this. Well, I'm going to go on the straight one because this one is too bumpy. This one is too short. This one is like, I don't know where it's going to go. This one, there's, is a raining. I don't want to drive on rain. This one is something, this one, that, that. this one is shine. This one is a sun, you know, shiny, beautiful, awesome. So what I want to do with that is these are all central banks. All right, this is all central banks and this is gold. This is all the central banks battling to see who's going to cut the rates first, who's going to hold the rates for longer so they can attract, you know, they can attract FDIs for direct investors that it's you into the currency. They want to have higher rates so they can pay higher dividends for they. Uh, they want to lower rates because they don't want to have higher rates because they want to pump it up the real estate market. They want uh, 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 too much things. You look to the side, it's a piece. It's gold. Gold will go up because people don't want to go through this stress. What they do with the money, they go to gold. If gold goes up, just hit it a new times high. Again, it's going to continue to go up. All right. Hope this explanation helped your um, mind. But pretty much this is what gold stands for. Okay. Now, coming back to here. Um, so... Uh, so this PMI and everything was pretty, uh, pretty mixed, as I just say. Um, but you know, euro dollar is going up now because of the uh the 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 Fed from yesterday yet, 
right? We did have that retracement of profit taking, came back, beautiful. Now let's probably continue to 1.10. My target for your dollar would be 1.10 up move. All right, this is what uh, would be for me. Uh, now we're gonna have soon uh, the Bank of England MPC vote, um, cut, rate hike, unchanged, and then the right decision. Meeting minutes that I will be, I will be, I'm back. I will be going through this tomorrow when once we have the answer. Um, and we're gonna have as well tomorrow the um, PMIs for US as well and CPI for Japan. All right. Uh, and then we finished the week uh, with retail sales from UK and retail sales from CAD. All right, guys, this is all from me. Um, I hope you could get something from the FOMC, from the Fed rate decisions. I know it sounds a bit tricky, but it is what it is. I do think the Fed is finishing rates soon. Okay. Um, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, Santos. Yeah, yeah, go go ahead, Amos. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. I don't know your time, but yeah, we are in the morning. Uh, for me, it's good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to know how tricky this uh, Swiss France has been uh, uh, because they just, mm -hmm. I mean, at the wait. I was expecting maybe they would take it long, but unfortunately, they, they did it just yesterday. So what is your suggestion about those, I mean, pairs on the Swiss funds? Because since they've cut the weight, uh, I'm thinking about the weakness of the Swiss funds. Anyway, if there, there can be any data that can back up the endowed for that one, I, I can't tell. So I'm just asking your point of view on the yeah, yeah. Swiss funds. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, thank you. Good question. Uh, no, not a problem. It's a good question. Um, actually, the Swiss franc, it is very, uh, very weak at right now. And for your information, the S and B did cut the rates by twenty five base points, uh, just now. Right. So if we look at the economic calendar here, we had um, S and B interest rate decision were expected to be one seventy five. That means no change, but it came in at one fifty. So that means that they did change. Um, they did change 25 base points of cut from today. Look, when we go to, let's say, USDCHF, uh, we had this massive increase on price. All right. Um, CHF JPY, we did this massive collapse down because CHF is on the front. Now, what I would suggest you to do is look to trade CHF. It's a good trade to have on the portfolio, but look to trade to stronger or weaker currency. All right. So let's say um, the Fed is looking to cut, right? Therefore, I wouldn't be looking to trade USD CHF, just my own opinion. You, if your strategy goes aligned with that, fantastically. Uh, now, I would be looking to trade Euro CHF. New Zealand CHF that are very both uh, weaker currencies at the moment because CH uh, New Zealand is just on a um, um, uh, recession. All right, Euro CHF, that Euro is much stronger than um, Swiss franc. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, Aussie CHF, all right, going up as well. Right, so I would like to pair with those trades. Um, that can generate opportunities to us, all right? My view on the Swiss franc is that it will maintain um, a, um, a, a, a weaker um, weaker pace towards um, the, the next few months, the next few quarters, all right? Only if something really is good happening into the country. But we always need to remember Swiss franc is a, a gold standard currency. Sorry. Um, CHF is a is a um a gold back to the currencies. Uh, sorry, a gold currency. So you know anything that happens, same with gold. 
So people will go to buy Swiss franc, all right? It's a safe haven. Um, I hope I hence, uh, I've answered your question. Now, next question. What's your take on Euro dollar? Yes, I, I think Euro dollar will continue to go up, as I've just said, at 110. That has been my target um, for a few weeks already. Um, I thought we would be hitting on here, but we didn't. So, you know, uh, this pullback was pretty clear from, you know, this top, from this top here, we had this pullback right at 61, 71. So that was a good buy, you know, going somewhere around here. Um, I've posted today a long GBPUSD idea as well. All right. So if you haven't looked at yet, it's on the Telegram. All right, guys. So I stay here. Um, hope everyone have a awesome weekend ahead. If you have any questions, please send me a message on Telegram and I will do my best to answer you on time. All right, guys. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next uh, webinar as well in the next video on YouTube.